stuff. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are talking amongst ourselves. And yes, you know, just how the way it is. We're here live. And uh, so far, there is four of us. Uh, we've heard from a number of others who were just detained. Other things. I want to say happy birthday, Al, wherever you are. I uh, hope you're having fun. Cheesesteak22, I did not get your email, so please uh, send me that. And Brandy as well. There were some emails I did not have. And if you wish to participate, let me know and we'll get you pulled in. Um, so, yeah, this is a fun day. Welcome, everyone. This is meeting with the moderators. Uh, I hope to be bringing more in. Uh, these are the three that you see very often uh, to what would be my, I feel like I'm Hollywood Squares. Um, <laughs> Brian is to the left of me, uh, Lunsford, you've seen him. Uh, David uh, from Wales, uh, down below me to the right is uh, here. And we have Julianne from Queensland, way down under. Welcome, thank you moderators, how are you? Are you very good? Very good, very good. Really Excellent. glad to be here. Well, I am happy about this. I see y'all all the time, and you know, it's kind of like um, <laughs> I don't know. You you develop an idea of what you see by people when they write, and then when you see them, you go, "Hey, I was pretty accurate on that." <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you folks are just absolutely beautiful souls. So uh, I think it's cool. So um, we'll start with the ladies first. I always like to find out how you got here, what brought you here, and Julie, let's just start with you, and uh, welcome. Uh, you and I have been emailing back and forth for quite some time. I became very intrigued with uh, your ability in deciphering language and showing how it's really a spell language. And uh, from there is how you and I got to know each other. And so uh, welcome. Tell the world a little about yourself. Well, everybody, um, I started undoing the spell probably at least eight years ago. I was listening to Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. And, of course, his name is Will I Am. And also there was other ways I was looking at it too. So I was writing poetry because I've written a poetry book and the first word I pulled apart was um, potential, which is potent, I'm all of it. So we are all of that and I put an extra L on anything that's got I-A-L on the end of it because we stand upon two Ls, which are our legs. That's our foundation found at IONS. So anything that's got I-O-N on the end of it, I am on, I am here, and he and her are here. If you spell pull here apart, we're in that as well. So I just started pulling every word apart, and then I looked in mythology as well. And Mithridatus, which Mithra is the word for antidote, and when you pull Mithridatus apart, it's myth, rid, at, I, us. So get rid of the myth because we are it. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> you see, folks, this is what I mean. Um, a question, Julie, how did you come upon this? I mean, your knowledge is, I haven't seen it in many, uh, and particularly the way that you write, it shows that it's very well uh, founded in you. Well, my grandmother, as you know, um, taught me the alphabet backwards so I can recite that and through that I look at things from a lot of different angles and I've been journaling for quite some time when you go through your changes in your life and you look at things differently. So in my, this is one of my journals here that's way back in 2009. So this is like in ancient times they call your journal like the book of shadows so once you've written it down you've really created it so it's just full of you know information and I now look at it and see that I've actually created a lot of that and in I used to be in sales and I went along to those rah-rah happy festival things that motivate you and um 
I said to the owner I was going to be number one and I was aiming for Australia and I put it on the shower, which is the shower, because when you're in the shower you get a lot of that water because you're a conduit, you receive all of that information coming through those particles. So I wrote on the shower that I was going to be number one and I become number one in the world for sales within six months. So it was, and I thanked my sisters because they always used to say, oh, you're number one in dad's eyes. So when I become number one, I said, thanks for telling me that all my life. And um, so it just started by just looking at, I even looked back further when I was looking at words probably then, but it didn't really start till 2012. But, it, but the journaling, motivation, writing it down, I read a lot of, um, what do you call them, uh, metaphysical books. I didn't read much uh, fiction. Um, I just got into reading those sort of things and I knew that it was in us. I, I, I used to have meditation groups here and then I thought, no, I don't need that anymore. I can... I. I just get information in the garden because first thing in the morning I go out and have a herb pick. I go through my garden and all the information stored in those those leaves and you're actually I'm ingesting that because of your land, you're connected to that because I am on old Aboriginal land. We have the Aboriginal birthing pools at the end of my road. So I used to lay on the grass and that's where I got a lot of my information. So I think it's a lot of old, old language that that's how I, you know, that's how wow. it starts. It's just laying on the grass and connecting with Mother Earth. And that's what they, we, we really require to walk on the grass with our feet bare and she'll give you everything you require and I spell require as R E C H O I R because I re sing. I don't re I don't need or want anything. I just require it. So when you're asking for it, you're singing like you sing to your supper. And so outstanding. Yeah, I mean, I I have an art shop that I'm a volunteer. I've been volunteering in our community since I sold my business for about 18 years, and um, I had as I showed you some of the photos possibly and all the things I've done over the, as characters dressed up in character and reciting poetry and um, this is the new direction now um, is really going out to the world probably to show them that we are under a spell. I know a lot of you guys say it's the God spell. Well, I call it, I just pull gospel apart and it's go spell. It's go telling spells. You just go and spell everything because English language has been put together as a spell because in the dark ages, no one could read or write. And I said to my husband, I said, I don't think there should be any ease on the end of these words. And so one night, how spirit or whoever you want to wakes you up in the middle of the night and we put the radio on and there's a linguistics expert and she said there were no E's on the end of the English language 300 years ago. It's because when they used to typeset, they put an E on the end of every end of the line to fill the line in. So that's how E's got on the end of all the words. Interesting. So, and there were no G's that, that long ago too. So if you take the G away from the in or the in, it's dance in and sing in and laugh in and play in. So it's all inside of us. There's nothing outside. It's all in here. Outstanding. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to have you on because, wow, <laughs> I am blown away. Julie, that is, that is amazing. And my mind is rejoicing in what I hear. Um, can wow. I just say one, one more thing till the boys have their chat? Um, I do like to chat, obviously. Um, I'm a storyteller. So everybody in the chat room, if you don't believe it, that's your belief. You're able to do that. We're all on a different path. But I show you how freeing it is when you undo the spell. And Freemason, if you pull that word apart, it's free, my son, or free mother is on. 
right? When you pull that word apart. So we are free because it's what you think. Well, yesterday on the radio, which was so synchronicity after watching your show, they were talking about the moon landing. Anyway, I started singing, pulling occupants of interplanetary craft, pulling occupants of interplanetary, most extraordinary. Anyway, the girl comes on the radio and a woman from Gympie called Julie and it wasn't me because I'm laying in bed next to my husband, asked for that song on the radio. (laughs) And that song song is about connecting with the universe. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how quick and synchronicity, that happened instantly. So whatever you think you create, abracadabra, I create as I speak, and wish is what I say happens. Oof, girl. Back in my uh, days in Pentecost time, we would say, I ain't going to shout you down. You're preaching good. Speaking of uh, <laughs> preaching good, we have Lois. Hello, Cajun Queen. How are you doing, my dear? I am doing well. Thank you. <laughs> hey, girl. I just love your energy, Lois. Hi, Lois. Hey, hey, girl. Ryan. Hey, baby. Hello. Hey, sweetheart. So how have you fared down in Louisiana, my dear? Good. Good? It's hot, hot, but it's good. Yeah, it is hot. It is hot. It's hot next door to you, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I am excited to have uh, the next person, Barry. Um, David Barry. uh, I got to tell you, Dave, I love your energy. And I have... You know, again, as we talked before we came on, most of the people I know is by what they write. And, you know, it's amazing when you actually get to meet them, you're going, you know, I knew they looked like that. So uh, (laughs) welcome, David. Uh, Now you're in Wales. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and how in the world did you get here? (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's a bit of an, I don't know really where to start, to be honest. I've been having weird things happening to me all my life. Okay. Uh, You're in good company then. Just when I was a kid, I used to see rainbows and all sorts on my ceilings. I'd be floating. I'd be all sorts, all sorts of things like that happening. Um, I've had lots of metaphysical things happening around me all my life. Uh, you know, things like seeing my nan, she just passed away, and I saw her sitting in a chair. I've um, been seeing spirits, things like that. Um, I've just been experiencing a lot of strange things. Now, I always considered it odd that I was experiencing these things and nobody around me was. And if I discussed it with them, they would always be a bit like, I don't know what you're talking about. So after years as a child, you learn to keep your mouth shut and just experience the things. Um, and it's taken me to about the age of 40. 41 to really start looking into the things um so i don't know what happened to me something just clicked and i i knew there were mysteries in the world i just needed i had this yearning inside me to figure out what they were i'm sure now i'm in the field i found out there's lots of people hey. like that um hey, hey, hey. kaz is here hey kaz, <laughs> hey, kaz. <laughs> hello so i just went out learn, looking just searching seeking trying to find as much information in any field as i could you know, I found out about the esoteric side of things. You needed to know the basics so you could find out the information that they were teaching you. Uh, so I sort of learned the levels as you go up. So I discovered this is sort of like your first level. You'll understand that. But then there's another couple of levels above that. When your knowledge and your gnosis increases, you gain more wisdom from the text. Um, so I've been rereading old things as well. As you know, I sent you my digital oh, library. I'll tell you guys, uh, um, you don't know, not to interrupt you, Dave, but he is a prolific reader like the rest of us. So, yes. Well, the funny thing was, until my 41st birthday, I had only read one book, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. Well, good in choice, but life. I mean. <laughs> in, my entire, uh, in, t- in my entire life, up until that point, I'd only read one book, millions of pages on the internet and what have you. Um, but only one actual book cover to cover. And obviously since then, my God, I can't think how many I've covered. Um, but like I say, it's all in the search of that knowledge to find out what the mysteries are out there. Mm. Um, it's just so much I could say on those topics. I don't really know where to start, Wayne. As you well, know I'm going to have you on. I'm going to plan on having each one of you on individually so we can get a little bit more into this. 
Uh, David, I got a question for you. Would you consider yourself uh, a magician, a sorcerer um, in this path? Um, I've done a lot of education, so we say. Mm -hmm. I've had something inside me say it's not time yet. It's not time yet. I've read the books that you read, you're covering and many, many more besides. You know, I've done the Golden Dawn cover to cover um, many, many times. I've got as much information as I can from all the hermetic teachings, wisdoms, magics, all the different schools out there, the Egyptian magics, everything, the, um, the Sumerian magic systems. I've studied them all, but I haven't actually ever practiced them. There's just okay. something inside me says, wait your time. The time will be right. You know, things like, um, I think I sent you the book. I'm not sure. I think you may have actually put me onto it. Um, the Sorcerer and the Quantum World. Just explain. I've re recently read it. It has helped me understand how our actual thought waves create the manifestations through the quantum field. So as our thought waves go out, they never, ever stop. And obviously, they have the tiny interactions in the quantum world. And those tiny interactions then get bigger and bigger to create the manifestation that you want to achieve. Like it says in the principles of hermeticism, everything is thought. Yeah. Yeah. You're, so my, my, I don't have beliefs. I think we should just be, it's now a time of knowing. We're into the age of Aquarius. Now it's not yeah. a belief. I, it's now a time of knowing. And I have these feelings inside me. And something's just telling me that your thoughts can literally do anything. But mm. we need to understand how to control the ether or whatever you want, name you want to put on it with your thought pattern to create the manifestations that you need. We've lost something. I'm searching to find what it is we've lost. Mm, Got to have you on, my friend. This is what we need. <laughs> along, mean, the way, I'm all, <laughs> along the way, I'm trying to also create a cheat sheet for anybody who's never done this before, because I feel like I've gone from zero to 100 miles an hour in the space of two years, should we say. I feel that there are people out there that just aren't on the path, but if they're given a little nudge in the right direction, they can find the rest out for themselves because it's got to be a knowing. You can't just be told what to read. It seems to me that your information is handed to you as you're going along. That's how it's happened to me. I'll get one book, then another book. It's all in a certain pattern. If I had that book before that one, I wouldn't understand it. It's really Good strange point. how it's happened. It's just really strange how it's happened. It's just given to me. I'm not going looking for it. These things are just handed to me. I'll go from one to another, to another, to another, to another. It's crazy. <laughs> I think we got two types of people that come here those that are seekers and those who are real and sure. <laughs> like, you know, sure. Yeah. I don't know if I want this. Well, good. Uh, Kaz, um, Hi, yeah. how are you now? You're in England, right? I'm good. Yeah. In England. Yeah. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Just finished work. Literally. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if you wanted more punishment, but welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Thank you. Well, Kaz, we've had you on before, and you're just a delightful guest. And um, so I guess with you and Lois, I'd like to probably ask, how are things going? Cass, <laughs> um, I'll start with you. How are you doing? Start with me. Things are as crazy as usual. <laughs> awesome. There's lots going on. <laughs> Constantly. Um, the skies are they getting a little strange out there? It's getting a little strange, definitely. I'm yeah. seeing <laughs> things that shouldn't be here. <laughs> it is getting strange it out there. Crazy. It just makes is I just get fascinated by it. I just want to understand it all, and I just end up talking to it, whatever it is that's around me. And so, so who are you then? <laughs> <laughs> are you getting responses? Um, I, I do, but I can't quite understand what they're saying. Julie, like, I, I help I think, you. oh, it's in it's in like tones, frequencies. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and yeah, that's good. It's I can hear it clear as day, but it's very it different, just different tones and pitch. Mm. I've got to learn the musical language. <laughs> That's interesting. I've been practicing yeah. with that lately, actually. Oh, you have? Yeah. Um, well, Brian, you're going to be last. But Lois, how are you doing? I know last that uh, we had you on was right before I think you got the soaking. Or did you get the rain? 
Um, we got a little rain. It wasn't too bad. Really? Excellent. Did you chase it away with a spell? No. <laughs> we need a little rain. In the <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you yeah. heard the stories that you guys are in for the second Noah's flood. You know, I was like, you know, yeah. what? You know? Um, I, I got a surfboard. Okay. <laughs> you <gotta start> <laughs> yeah, it can get pretty bad down here with the floods. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how are you doing, bad. my dear? Last we spoke, you had your godson who passed on to the other side. How have you been since then? I'm, you know, doing pretty good. Everything's going pretty well. Um, good. Everybody took it pretty well, and we moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that's what he would want. He has. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, 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 I want to share this with the group, you know, doing the dishes, I was meditating and this thought came to me. I think we're all in for the surprise of our lives when we pass over. I, I what I got the sense was, is that it's really going to be far out folks. It, yeah. I think it's going to be beyond anything that we have imagined. And Brian, I can't think of a better segue to bring you in on that. Uh, how are you doing, my friend? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I know that your mother uh, passed over, and it, for you and her, it was quite a journey, uh, a bonding, wasn't it? It was. It, it well, was so a, talk to us was, a little bit it, about it that. Was, it was mind-blowing, first of all. Well, the cancer, you know, it got to the point where she was – laying in the bed and the fluids are fit filling up. And of course we're administering pain meds and all this to her. And those aren't leaving her body. It's just her. So she's, you could tell she's, she's, there's a lot of pain involved with that, even though we're trying to alleviate all this pain. So it started to um, fester in me. I started going, I told her, I said, just go, just, you can leave. But then I noticed that she was leaving her body. She's laying in the bed. I look at her and then it's not her. And then if we had to clean her or move her or do anything, she would come back and then we'd have a little interaction and then she would leave again. So I started going into meditation and the, or the orbs that were around her and the house when all this was going on was just, it was intense. You know, you, you felt like some of these, uh, spirits entities uh beings uh, we knew or we, and others we felt like we we didn't know but when she left um she opened her eyes for a little bit she took she start actually she started singing we heard her humming and then she opened her eyes she looked around at everybody closed her eyes and just simply left but when she did i was able to go into meditation and kind of uh join her in a way and holding her hand and let me jump back. I'm kind of skipping ahead. When I went into meditation before she actually left her body, um, we walked through a garden together and I would, I would say this is in the astral plane. Um, I, I didn't really have a name for it at the time, but that's, it just felt like the level in between a different frequency. And we walked through a, a garden that had every flower throughout the universe together. Mm -hmm. And when I was a cool. child, we had gone to the San Diego zoo and these monkeys started this chant. I know how insane this sounds, but that same thing happened again from, um, you know, when I was young and she'd taken me to the zoo, we walked through this garden and she was actually younger than I was. She looked to be in her twenties and, in, and in, in that form there. And then, um, we just had this talk, you know, this, this unconditional love and, and we had some things happen within the family, you know, throughout the years that she just wanted to remind me of that unconditional thing and to stick with it. Mm. And it was just a real bonding time. So when she actually left, you know, she moved through me and when she got to the other side, what in my meditation, what I visualized was her, being embraced by all of us that are still here because there is no time on that end. So we're there as well. And it was just a real experience to, uh, to feel Dad. that. Dad, I'm going to die. 
<laughs> I love it's music. Live, folks. <laughs> it's live. Uh, oh, man, I I'll tell I've got to leave a minute. My mom's okay. not well. That's okay. Well, okay. Um, but it was just, a, it was a beautiful experience. And, and since then, um, I've started listening to tones. When I was younger, I marched something called drum corps back in the day, where it's all brass instruments and a drum line. So I have, a, I have an ear for frequencies, different harmonies and stuff like that. And so I started um, picking a specific tone throughout the day in the morning, a bass tone, usually 333 or 432. You pick that bass tone throughout the day. And when you have a bass tone in your head, you start to pick up other frequencies, higher or lower. I started being able to tune into the lower frequencies that are coming from these uh, towers around here. And I know when they're cut on, and I know when they're cut off. And it seems like in the evening they cut those things on. But you just start to pick up on those different frequencies within your head if you have a bass tone. Now, this it, it must work <clears throat> differently for everybody. But for me, you know, it, this is how it works. It's, as long as I have that bass note or frequency in my head, I can start to pick up on other things. And this is something that I kind of I, I got from <laughs> mom when I spoke with her. But for me, she, she hasn't died. She hasn't passed on. It's just um, yes. she's, she's moved into uh, she's part of it all. As we're part of it all now, we just there's a there's a slight disconnect, but it's I just don't feel like she's passed on. I got a thousand questions. Anyone, uh, Julie, anyone have a question? I mean, my mind is reeling on this because I think, Brian, you've really, um, I think you've portrayed what the eventuality for every person here is. And go ahead, David. I should say I find that quite interesting because at the moment I'm caring for my mum. I'm up there every day and she's in the very final stages herself. And what Brian just explained, my mum's lying there and we'll be having a conversation. Then all of a sudden she's just gone. You see her eyes go. You can tell she's just gone. I can't see anything, but I know she's not there. And then we'll have a conversation afterwards and she'll tell me she was somewhere really nice, somewhere really pretty, this kind of thing. And she's also seeing a lot of orbs herself around the house. I haven't seen any around the house. I've only my ever mom, seen my mom told me she says before, you know, in the living room. She didn't say this yeah. a lot because of everybody else. But when we were alone, she said, "Brian, people's yeah. faces keep changing." She said, "You keep turning into light, and then you turn yeah. off. You turn into light, and you turn off." And as she goes, "I'm seeing," up, she says, "I'm seeing other people walk around. I'm acknowledging yeah. them." She says, "Anytime," and this is the part about sigils that really blows my mind is yeah. that if we had something like a cross on the wall, she yeah. said it would turn into a portal of sorts and start to Yes. Spin. Yeah, so the sigils She too. said it would, she wow. says it's creating, she says, and I'm also seeing an edge to everything. She, it's like she was so peeling back the layers of what, of this reality and was able to see. But those, those different signs and symbols were turning into things. It's actually seeing them for what they were. Seeing them for what they were, mm. yeah. Mm. Seeing, seeing the, the the energy of them, which is very real. But what she said, uh, certain family members, their faces would go dark, and it would be, you know, I'm talking horns and stuff like <laughs> okay. that. She says there's dark things that that are here. She goes, but I don't have any. I said, don't have any fear of those guys. Just smile at them. Now, were <laughs> these um, spirits that she were seeing, or was it the family members that were there? She would see different spirits by themselves angels all, all around you know kind of hovering over everything and then she was seeing within individuals like she said i was turning into light and then i would come back our faces would augment they would twist into yeah. a different face and then come back so it's almost like different spirits are working within us for that moment or borrowing our energy is what i felt like um then darker spirit sitting on the shoulder, you know, of other individual family members kind of whispering. It was just the, it was amazing the way she described it. Julie, you have anything you want to add to that? I am blown away on this. 
Well, I was just going to talk about the tuning forks because uh, my grandson's special needs and he didn't like, he doesn't like low tones. So I do have a set of tuning forks that he will have sit at his ears because he just doesn't like, or as from a baby, he couldn't have the mower, a mixer, a blender, any of that kind of tone or the anything like that. And so... Um, I had these tuning forks and he would just sit there and when I, I do energy work on his mother, um, he would just have the forks beside us and he'd put them to his ears and that. So we can have music on in the radio and he'll just um, say off oh, because he's limited in a conversation, but he'll, he put, he actually come up with the word noisy. So he only likes certain tones and so he... And, and um, when he was born, there was a slim chance that he would live. So I'd been learning energy work and I'd go into the hospital when they said there was a slim chance that he would live. And um, they expected him to be in there probably three months. And I was doubting, as you do, what I was doing, if it worked or not. But having my hands <laughs> on him, um, I had him, he was out of hospital in three weeks. And the doctor mm -hmm. said, are you... Um, got a medical background and I said no so that that confirmed that we've all got it in us healing and all that sort of thing so yeah. the tuning forks though is what I I really thought that was a great idea with the pitch I might try that with these ones that I've got now to see if I can resonate with that frequency myself. well you've just opened up a whole line of thought here that I think it's something and this is why I love gathering because I think there's something fundamentally important, and thank you, Brian, for bringing this out. I think that I'm going to buy, I'm going to go order a tuning fork when I get off of here, um, because I know frequencies. Frequencies respond to certain parts of organs. Organs have different frequencies in which they respond to. Um, it's almost as if I'm wanting to work on a specific thing that day, I will pick the frequency, whether it be 333, 432, if I'm working on a base, and then I will wake up in the morning, gaze at the sun, have a specific crystal in hand that, you know, kind of takes me in the direction that I, the one that my higher self, say, would pick, and I will go outside and listen to the sun and, and hold it and tune into that base frequency for the day. And anything outside of that, I seem to be picking up on instantly. If something veers off, you go, oh, what's that? And then you can kind of examine that. It just seems like a little tool that I'm able to use to just mm. be in wonderment of the world. Because this whole thing is just, I, I'm coming at it from like a childlike perspective, <laughs> looking in the sky and going, oh, wow, hi, giant waving back at me. You know, that's stuff like that. I love it. So it's just another thing for me to really em embrace and enjoy about this. Lois, you were going to say something? Well, I know when my mother was getting ready to depart, I was working on her to release some things before she got ready to transition. And I know that she also, she saw an angel, but then she started experiencing metaphysical things, moving around and everything. Uh, my mom was like a seer. She was very gifted. She could, she just knew things. She could see things. Uh, she could tell you something and you could pretty much bet on it, okay? Um, my family was a little bit strange. <laughs> passed it on. Well, you're in good company uh, here. Yeah. I, <laughs> I know you. You're just a sister yeah. from another mother. That's all I look at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he passed it on. I passed it on accidentally to my daughter. And, you know, she sees spirits. I see spirits. Um, I, when I started this YouTube page, I was able to come across other people who had similar experiences. And so this is kind of where my journey started. And, you know, like-minded people. That's who a lot of what my readings consist of is coming across like-minded people so we can share. Because, you know, it's kind of hard to go out there and tell people you see spirits. You know, they're not going <laughs> yep. like, oh, Really? Yeah. yeah I tell them good. anyway. I always let them know anyway. 
<laughs> that way yeah. you know who your friends are, you know. And yeah, I you really do. Response. <laughs> and I actually discovered I could do healings. You know, by by accident, I realized I could do healings. And it was somebody talking to me, and I started toning into them, and I started feeling their pain. And I and that's when I discovered I could do healings. And that's when I started on this journey of doing healings. And this became another focus point on my journey is to come together as a collective and doing collective healings. Yeah. So this is also an important part of my journey is to come together and do healings. Mm. You know, I, I forgot to get Karen. And by the way, I want to say to the other uh, moderators, you know, I apparently have lost your emails. Email me and we'll have a second round because this is... This is fascinating. Um, Lois, I want to talk to you uh, because you read the cards and yeah. I have gotten a couple of emails that those who have that gifting, and I think we all can, we all could do it, but I think there's others that have energies that are specific to that. Have you noticed a difference? Is there a difference intensity uh, to the readings you're doing or... Now, I'll tell you specifically what uh, someone wrote me. She said in the past, you know, it was like you were almost kind of reading the mirror of the individual in front. But she says there's a difference now. It's kind of getting much more intense. It's like you're seeing more of what so many people guard not to show. I try not to. <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> um. But see, my experiences start out as a child. I remember between one and two years old, something was visiting me as a child. So, you know, I don't know what happened. I don't know what my journey is supposed to be. I'm still, you know, searching. Um, when I picked up the cards, and it was because of Jeff that I picked up the tarot. Dork. Because, you know, coming out of Christian net, yes, coming out of Christian net, you know, I thought if I picked up a touch tarot, I would burn up. <laughs> <laughs> My poor wife thought the same thing. Then I did. Yeah, she's, she's like, like you didn't burn. Up. You know, listen to Jeff, following Jeff, and he kept saying, get a divinity, and I finally picked up, you know, the cosmic. I love it. Uh, cards, and I went from there. It just... And now I can't put them down. David, I have a question for you because yeah. you and I, we, we read a lot of the, the, the same older books. Give me your assessment of about what you've heard. And I, I think particularly when I look, I think about a Franz, I think about a number of these other authors and what the panel here has experienced. What is your take on the knowledge that you've read? Because you're, and, and again, I just want to say, isn't this odd? This is all a very recent occurrence for many of our lives. We've been involved with it, touched yeah. with it, but yeah. seems like we've just now embraced it. How do you mean, Wayne? Do you mean like with reference to the energies that are going yeah, on? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. But, um, um, it seems to me like it's a transference of energies or something like that going on. Um, I've tried, like with my wife, she's got a serious form of arthritis and knees always hurting her. When we first got together, I used to just, we used to sit with her legs over my lap. And I used to sit there with my hand, just the palm of my hand over the top of her knee, not touching it, just almost over the top of it, about two millimetres, say, just above it. And my hand used to get so warm, and she'd start complaining that her knee was getting hot. So I was like, well, I, I don't know what's going on, but it's working. She'd always thank me, so I'd keep doing it. Now, through some of my studies, I've gone through the Tibetan stuff and um, a pain, uh, pain relief technique that they do. Um, we put your th th first three fingers on your larynx, they do the home eight times and administer the hand to the site of the pain, takes oh, the pain away. Oh. Now, I've, try, I've tried doing this on my mother, and, you, and my hand feels like it's burning. Um, it's one of the cancers on, is right, and one of the vertebrae on her back, and that's the one that's troubling her the most. So every day I go there, I'm doing it, home, and I put my hand on her. And to me, it feels like we're almost sucking that energy out or drawing it away, maybe. I don't know if we're actually taking it into ourselves, but I think the, the heat is a transference of the energy. So I think it's all to do with the energies within us flowing. By the way, I have the, I come out of the Christian, you know, I think we probably, if you had, most of us have, but I come out of the, the sect that believed in healing, laying on of hands. And yeah. um, I've had that, that exactly. gift. Yeah. It's something I've had 
Yeah, I think once again, I think there's some of us who are just natural gifted healers. That's it. I knew there was something going on, so I've just been trying to find out what it was I was doing. I haven't mm-hmm. really found a definitive answer yet as to what it is, but the best I can get, like you say, through the mag- the magics and what have you, it seems to be some sort of transference of energies going on. Mm-hmm. Very... I, think like, I, I think of it like the film, The Green Mile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's sucking all the pain out of them, and then he spits all the flies out. Yeah. Now, I may be taking all this energy in. I feel terrible on the inside. I haven't seen my mum today, so I've been feeling so bad. Now, I don't know if it's from doing if this it, or if it's the weather. It's like Africa over here at the moment. I've never experienced it. <laughs> it's Africa um, everywhere. It's Africa. Yeah, exactly. The, road, the roads are melting outside my house. <laughs> <laughs> and Julie, now it's cold where you are, right? Yes, it, it is. is yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, we, oh. we like two degrees, but we have Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So it's... There's been frost on our grass. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting. Um, <laughs> I really am. I'm waiting. You know, folks, so I, I, two things. The thing that I've gotten from this is that I think we need to focus more on healing. And I was going to have Karen on here, uh, uh, the Queen one, of though. Quartz. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we're planning to do this group healing in – I think we're getting, I think we're almost getting there. I mean, what's the sense, say the moderators? Yeah, definitely. I like the idea of the crystal network. I do too. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea. It's a building, that's for sure. There's so a- how many have crystals? I mean, Karen is giving these out to everyone who ask. Uh, Julie, what? if you want any, just write to Karen and I'll give you her an email. I'll show real quick, hold on. Thank you. has a crystal, but I haven't received one yet. I'm getting a pendulum from her as well. She's carving for me. Excellent. I haven't had one of those, I haven't had one of those crystals yet. I've received this this from her. so, cool. And she actually oh, sent yeah. this from my mother, but my mother passed before it arrived. So this same is Same crystal. Mm-hmm. That's the same one my mom's got. Yeah. Now, uh, Karen tells me that I apparently have the centerpiece of the network. I think it's something. So, yeah. That's the crystal, yeah. Yeah. So... I love how Julie, you're smiling. Out. What do you think about it? I see that big smile on your face. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got this huge big amethyst crystal my hum- husband bought for me, like when I probably woke up a little bit back in my <coughs> sorry. And it's like this I I I'll I'll show it one one time okay. if I get back on, but it's a huge it looks like a shark's mouth. And it's um just the most beautiful amethyst crystal. So I have them, but where we live, it's all jasper. It's red jasper. So it's actually supreme nurturer. And that's what the birthing tools are. We're all jasper. So crystals are an amazing thing. And my daughter is called Crystal. Julie, you have the teaching, I guess, of the original people. I mean, you're, you're very, you live in their, their, their sacred, I guess it's their land. I, I don't know how to put it any terms, but how could you, Maybe give us some insights on how the Aboriginal see in the departure of the spirit. Um, Well, I'm only getting really into it more now because I've just been over to Stradbroke Island, which is off from Brisbane. My nephew's over there and we've been communicating with his language because there's so many different languages within the one Aboriginal culture. We're yeah, called the Cubby Cubby or the Cubby. It's K A B or it's G U B B I or something like that. Yeah, I'm put something the bunch of the tribes of the um the quantum move, but it is similar in their language. But um, I've just asked him to break things down, and so B A on the end of any of the words we have is means place. And when you look at the Hebrew letter B, it means house. So there is similarities. And a lot of the local Aboriginals often talk about Hebrew language as well. So, I mean, it's all connected no matter what what it is. It's just that English was put together. The Queen's sister, um, her and I are pen pals, and uh, literally the Queen's sister, um, Mary, uh, yes. And uh, she... A year, a couple of years ago, sent me some really interesting documentation how um, the Egyptians and the Aboriginal people were very, they knew each other. 
the Egyptians came to the Aboriginals because they knew that the Ara Aboriginal, the original people, they knew that they had the source, the power. Yeah, well, we've got a pyramid here in Gympie. It's um, been knocked around and some of the stones are in front of the churches naturally um, and artefacts that have been taken away and were hidden underneath the Catholic floor, Catholic church floor, I think. And um, there's one, one big ape, they call it, which in some mythology, that's Thoth. So we have this in our museum. And... Um, I've been out to the pyramid a couple of times and the first time I went to it, um, the guy said, oh, you just have to stay here a minute. And I said, yeah, well, I'm feeling a bit ill, sick. He said, that's right. You've got to just wait for the energy to get used to it. But you're not allowed, they don't want you going there anymore because they're planning on putting a new highway over it. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 there's been a bit of a crack up about it. But if you look at it from many, many angles, Everybody that drives over it will be connected to the portal. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, maybe a little dysfunctional if they don't know. And I was just thinking, Mary told me it was Khufu. Um, there were actually two pharaohs. And the daughter of Khufu was pharaoh as well. And she was the one who actually either the story is she was either murdered or uh, due to a very strange shipwreck um, right there with the Aboriginal people. Yeah, well, this story goes, and there's so many stories, but the gold from Gympie, because all gold holds DNA, and it's actually in Tutankhamun's grave, supposedly. So they do talk about, because I've got a geology map that shows you, you know, the legend of how... You know, Queensland used to be underwater at one stage, but you can see the distinct line. And I'd say they they used to come right up to the shore, you know, come to the shore. Wherever we sat back then, we could have been in the Northern Hemisphere. We could have been anywhere, you know. True. So, yeah. So anything's possible. Infinite anything. possibilities. So Definite possibilities. At all. And by the way, I just want to invoke favor upon everyone. I forgot to do that. Uh, just casting, invoking favor, pulling it down from on high upon you. May there be nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. And there you go. That's what I'm talking about. And I think Shannon, doesn't Shannon Kling have a birthday as well today? Is it Sharon? It's, it's, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it is Shannon. So anyway, uh, happy birthday to everyone who's having one of those. So I have um, yesterday in my magic circle, and Brian, I'm going to use that tuning fork. You've given me an idea. David, I'm thinking about this inside. You know, once you make your your magic circle, I mean, I hadn't thought about the tuning forks. Um, wow. That, I think, is powerful invocation. Absolutely. It's a frequency. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like color, like yeah. um, it's just a perception. It's just another way to bring a frequency in or to, it's another way to harmonize what we're already doing. Yeah. So I'll share something with everyone. Um, I got this and I started doing this and it's powerful. If it actually looks like this, when you draw it out, let me just get it here for everybody. So it's like when you stand in your circle, you can actually like just put this, triangle down and then you just simply raise your hands and you bring them back in and i don't know cool. what it does but it's very interesting power um y'all try it let me know what you think have you got uh, the pyramid now when yeah it, and literally it's just it, and i didn't i was meditating and you get this sense of how to start doing this and i'm sure that's okay. something ancient i i'm assuming or if it isn't well then maybe we just pulled it down <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So, Kaz, how are you doing there? I know you've been, you know, just getting off work, and I think it's so good of you to step in on this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom just got rushed to hospital. Is she okay? Do we just need... Uh, got the, she just had a blood test results back, and they've just told her to get there now. I don't know. We don't know what's wrong, but she can hardly walk. She's got no energy. She, mm -hmm. she feels sick. Mm. What's um, your mom's name? Janet. 
Janet. All right, everyone, I just want you to stop and just focus in. If you need to, if you can't figure, see the name, just look at Kaz and think of her mom. And we're just going to send Janet healing energy, that warmth energy, and intent, the energy that begins to invigorate the body, that begins to increase the stamina and the vitality of the body. And, you know, I just come against this, um, this blood pressure thing. It's, uh, it's a curse. And uh, Janet, we just send you good health. Um, Got to stop this, folks. You know, uh, two of our people in our community were stolen from. Gary, um, he uh, lost him. Mean, he had a bag and goes into the store. Uh, Joe Sapien uh, was scammed, you know, identity theft. Uh, we got to stop this, folks. I, I just, I think we're more powerful than that. I think individually we need to empower every freaking person that's hearing our voice. Yeah. yeah, there's enough spirits. There's enough energy forces that you could that any thief that would ever come to think about it would be hit psychically with going, no, that if I touch that, I'm going to be cursed. Yeah, it's like those guys that did that to you that day, Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Found out what happened there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that was, I, I can imagine the look on your face when he said that. <laughs> Someone told me, they said, when you pass over, they said, if there's angels or demons, they're both going to just let you go by. <laughs> don't mess with the dude. <laughs> Frequency's too high. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if we're male or female, you know, in the uh, perpetual. I think we're actually a blending of both, but, uh, you know, yeah. that's just my take. What say the ladies? Whatever you think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have a question, Julie. I wanted to ask you, who awoke first, you or your husband? Uh, he's still asleep. Fine. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so he, he still, he's just basically just living in the, what we call the normal world. Yeah, but he comes along on the ride with me. He's okay. going on. He's born on Christmas Day, so he is already my little Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and another story is I'm born on Mary Magdalene's birthday, so we're a perfect pair. <laughs> wow. Oh, my. That's good. That's great. People say, people say, how do you know you're born on her birthday? I go, well, how do you know that he was born on that day? <laughs> True. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? It's a story. It is. I love it. I love it. <laughs> David, and you, uh, who's awake? Who was awake first? Uh, me, definitely. My wife. My wife switched on, but she's not awake yet. Though. I'm trying to get wake her up, but she she's too she she's too in the matrix. She doesn't okay. want to come out. Really, she doesn't want to come out. Yeah, Brian. What about you? Well, my wife has recently Kara? think yeah, Cara has recently kind of she thought I was just losing my absolute mind for the longest time <laughs> until the UFO she... actually showed up for her too. And then we started communicating and getting it to flash back and she goes, Oh well, I'm so relieved. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Relief is good. <laughs> like, well, so am I. Now we just communicate. Now she's working on this, you know, uh power of positivity and she's using all the different tools so she's starting to dive into it and she she constantly says this is just mind-blowing she goes it's really hard for me to wrap my head around you know and i just say uncomplicate yeah. it we complicate everything just uncomplicate it and listen to your inner and see what it says and it just it makes things so much easier couples you know there's a great couple uh terry and charlie um they're the ones who made me the sigil uh, I think it's so great when couples awake. I mean, my wife, Lynn, um, her attitude is, well, they lied to me about that. So she says, if they lied about it, then it must be some truth to it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Logic. Cass, what about you? How, how are you? Are you the only one awake in your family? Absolutely. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's not. I've tried. I keep trying. I show them all my photos. I love that. 
Oh, to my mum's, uh, maybe it's me that's done that to my mum's house. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, oh, my dad, I like my to dad, hang out with kids. My dad's just Friday, not man. having it. My dad's just on another planet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> All right, Lois, how about so, you? I mean, in your family. family it's a little bit unique. <laughs> You're. <laughs> <laughs> Lois, I've never asked you. So the rest of the family do, are they, are they, I mean, cause you live in the South. I mean, you and Brian, both y'all are in the Bible belt. Um, you know, so it, are they still pretty much into that mainstream thought? No, 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 not at all. Okay. It's changing the energies, the physics, everything is changing. It seems yeah. like, and peep there are people going, okay, you know, even with my wife before she would say, I want to get a tattoo and have a tarot reading, but I thought I was going to burn up. Now she's like guns on, she's ready to go. And I would say <laughs> with neighbors, with neighbors around here, more and more coming outside. And instead of saying, why are you always looking up? Now they're starting to look up. I would say the energies are changing for sure. You know what but, changed with my neighbors? When I put the sigil on my front yard and mowed it in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I drew him in chalk on my, my we can to that. <laughs> I, I did my favor sigil and I actually had the neighbor across the street knock on the door and says what the hell is that did you just forget to mow <laughs> I said no I think it looks like a good design and he says I was just asking if you needed a lawnmower <laughs> yeah. wake him up one way or another right <laughs> S sidewalk chalk works really well too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've laughed so much on this one, and and Brian, thank you for sharing. I want you to come back. In fact, I want each of you to come back on individually. I think you both, all of you, have so much to share on this. And again, if I missed you on the moderators, let me know. We'll have a uh, part two. Uh, so. Ending out on this, um, let's start with you, Kaz, and then Lois, and then Julie, David, and then Brian, and just kind of let people know, you know, if I, I if you have your YouTube channel, I didn't put it up, and I will, uh, but whatever you want to say. <laughs> cool. Kaz, yeah, I have a YouTube channel of my own. It's just Kaz Hawk. Um, just put that in, and I'll come up. And you'll see lots of crazy sky and other things, lots of orbs and energies, lots of energy on there recently. And yeah, keep your eyes on the sky, guys. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. I showed the pictures yesterday I took of the sun. So I showed yeah. them to my wife and she says, that's an eyeball. <laughs> it looked like an eyeball, didn't it? It, it, was it, an eyeball. it did look like an eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lois, yeah. Miss Cajun Tarot Queen. Yes, as usual, most of y'all know I do readings on my YouTube channel and we do healings. And the next healing that's coming up is for Jun Jun. That's my grandson who's getting ready to go through surgery again to have additional surgery to have. Um, his leg he's a double amputee oh. and the first surgery he started having seizures so this is why i want to do this healing to protect him over this other surgery what date is that it's this month i'm not sure exactly what date i have to do this month. all right let me know and um i'm thinking i think we're gonna do the healing this weekend i'm not sure either saturday or sunday i'll let you know okay yeah, Cajun Queen of Terror. Folks, they they all have their channels. I just didn't put it up there. Miss Julie? Um, well, I don't have a YouTube channel. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, technology and me, I'm getting in the groove. But I'll just, I'm um, going to recite a poem, a short little poem to everybody. Be more, do less. Let go, express. Be you, no other. Find out, discover, have fun. Mm. Lost, <laughs> have fun. Um, I've just lost it because I slowed it down. Anyway, be more, do less, let go, express. Be you, no other, find out, discover, have fun, judge none, open up, you've won. Ooh, uh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Boom, shakalaka. I said, I won, man. 
<laughs> yeah, see, I, I, <laughs> I love this. I'm definitely going to get one of those. David Barry, my good friend. Okay. Um, I don't have a YouTube channel. Um, I am on YouTube. Uh, if you search for me, David Barry 75. Um, I've got thousands of videos stored on there. So if you ever want to get into searching, that's a good place to start. Just pop on there and have a look. All right. I'd like to have that. That be, We'll pass that around. There's thousands on there. Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you, you know what? We, we're not like the funny channels that have the millions of people views because this is serious stuff, you know. Yeah. As uh, the late Marlon Brando would say, this is serious stuff. Uh, Brian, you, sir. Brian Lunsford's my uh, YouTube channel, and uh, I'd like to hold on to it. And then I'd like to speak on behalf of my brother, Brian, and say, be the frequency that you want to receive. Yeah. And I yes. hope he gets yeah. better soon, right now. Brian, go to the dentist. I mean, I hate him, but uh, what do you do? I will uh, drive up to Tennessee and pull it out for you, brother, if you need yes. me. Oh, yes. he got two <laughs> Yes, he does. He was going to be on, and uh it did not work out so well he says it's really hurting him uh julie a lot of people are loving that poem they really are um it's a great poem the poem Good. book is called this is not the front sit over excellent this is not then you flip it and it's rose to take you so we're all rising <laughs> how freaking cool is that so it's back to front inside out <laughs> I'm telling you, is this a community or what? Absolutely. Thank well, you. Thank you Lois, so I much. see that you were writing something. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. Well, all my good people, thank you. I tell you, um, you are like family to me. Um, this community is growing because of you. You're here every time on and um I just find it an honor. Thank you for allowing me to share part of your journey. It's uh, you're wonderful people. Thank you. Wayne. Thank, you Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're just going to speak favor over all the moderators and that special type of favor. And thank you guys. I mean, and gals. And who is this? I uh, look at there. <laughs> uh, this is this is Josephine. She wanted to say hello real quick. Hi, Josephine. How are you? He said hi. How are you? say i'm good <laughs> josephine yeah. the whole world is seeing your face all around the world <laughs> <laughs> look at the eyes i mean this is what it's all about folks all right folks thank you um what a day y'all have just you've made my day I, I am healed i'm walking on clouds and uh thank you to all of you thank you all thank right you, folks have a good day well, I will, and we'll see y'all back on Monday, on Sunday with Jeff Doherty. And, and Lois, I'm going to share that story with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Much love to everyone. Be good, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.